All right, let's take a look at Power Hour. So Power Hour is, um, I sent an email out to you yesterday, or, or Gerald did. So there's an afternoon Power Hour, and then there's a morning Power Hour. So the difference is the more the afternoon is typically three to four, and the morning the standard power I like nine to ten, but typically a lot of traders um, consider power hour nine thirty to ten thirty. So, but I, I I do like the nine to ten level, uh, and also the three to four level. What that means is that we want to look at setups in those power hour levels so that's where a lot of volume picks up so power hour is defined as a period of high volume high volatility and this creates great opportunities for us on the strategy you're going to be getting um, for outer zone trades 9 to 10 um, are, uh, is a really good power hour for the S&P and then also we have a uh, power hour at the close. We know at five, uh, 350 to 10, 4 o'clock, we get a really nice surge in the market typically, and we had it yesterday. So you can look for the zone breakouts via the strategy, uh, the new update you're getting, and also the indicator. So both of them are great opportunities, power hour in the morning and power hour in the evening. Some traders only trade power hour. So... The strategy I'm seeing out to you is pretty set for power hour trades, the outer zone trade and also the zone breakout trader. So make sure we're aware of that uh, going into the session every day that the power hour levels are time to make sure we are looking to get in. So um, if you look at yesterday, it happened right at 3.30. So I have pretty set the strategy, if you noticed yesterday, um, the strategies are finished, and Jerry and I, uh, for about an hour in the room, we were working on the workspaces, as you can tell yesterday. And you notice I have a workspace that's set up to pick up this 3:30 to 4 o'clock surge, and that is the um, that is on the zone break. So the zone break specifically will show these yellow candles that will go when there is a breakout on the zone break in the trading room and also the strategy and also the indicator. So um, I do have that preset for you to pick up the morning power hour. There's a time window in the strategy. And then also I have it preset to pick it up in the, um, in the evening also. So um, you can indicator this in or you can strategy. Now the indicator uh, yesterday, when Derek was in the room, Derek had a beautiful failure trade short before the failure came up yesterday. We were talking in the room. If you go back, look at the chat, Gerald, I mean, um, Derek and I was talking at this level, and he had a great question. The S&P was at this level, and Derek said, hey, about high value area, when can we counter this market, or, or when can we look to short the market on a, uh, he wanted to look at, see if the market's going to go retrace. There's two ways you can do it. Uh, market profile was sitting down here, a high value area. You'd want to. There's only two ways you can take a retracement in the market, which is a corrective wave. One, you have to wait till you get back inside a high value market profile, which is over here on our white charts. Or two, you can look for a failure setup. Well, on the indicator uh, that I've, uh, we are sending out to you guys, uh, there's only two setups that's marked on that indicator. If I come into the indicator and I look at it, it has a slingshot and a failure. So on this one, Gerald yesterday set up the workspace, workspace for you guys to pick up the failure and then also the slingshot here. So it's gonna pick up the slingshot and the failure and then we have the zone break it will pick up also. So we always stock two trade setups in the room. We stock the outer zone trade and the zone break. So at 9 to 10, we'll look to pick up the zone, uh, the outer edge trade again during this power hour coming up in 30 minutes. Uh, but also the failure trade. So when it's up here, uh, Derek ended up picking a nice short in the room. So before this yellow candle came up, I said the only trade set up would be a getting below high value. And then we could look for a short opportunity or look for this arrow to pop up. This arrow will pop up automatically against zone trend, which it did. This arrow will pop up and this yellow candle will fire off. 
So this yellow candle will fire off. It fired off right at this swing yesterday. So we're talking about it right in here, that that's the next setup we'd look for. Um, the short was, what, 99? Uh, Derek, what'd you get filled? 98 and 3 quarters, I believe, if I recall you correctly. 98 and 3 quarters, he got short here in the room. So nice short there. And uh, put a shout out to him. He had a real big day yesterday. Good job. So 98 and 3 quarters short, and it got as low as uh, 84. So that's a 10 point potential trade off of a failure trade. The indicator will show a, um, it will get a beep on your computer. It will start beeping when this yellow bar forms. So that is one of the trades. That is called a failure trade. A failure trade is against zone trend. And typically the best ones will happen if the market's been moving hard up or hard down and it gives you a nice little retracement as a 10 point play in the S&P. But what I said, and this is awesome, let's talk about the oscillator down. What I was talking about Derek yesterday before this happened, is I said this, this oscillator, we were right here. We were paid below negative 100. I said this oscillator needs to go up and stay below the 40 threshold. And it was right here is 30, 36. And I said it has to go back below. So the trigger on this trade, I was telling him, would have to go back below negative 100 and see an arrow form. So it went back below negative 100, and sure enough, the arrow formed right exactly in the yellow bar. We'll fire a few guys, and uh, that was a 99 as a 10 point. So that's the first setup. The other two setups that you can look for that the indicator will beat for you guys and turn a yellow bar is the um, outer edge or outer zone slingshot and then the third one is our zone break. Now the outer edge happens when the market is in range or chop typically. Or if it's trending hard outside of profile, you want to take outer zone slingshots with the trend. And three of the zone breaks. The zone breaks work really, really well during power hour because of volume and volatility. So those are your three setups. Failure setups don't come up a lot. We, we, we discuss this for months and months and months as setup. Because it's so, um, I'm going to spell failure, right? Um, we discussed this um, setup extensively for months uh, because it catches that big, nice swing down or swing up um, when the market is um, um, pushed down hard or pushed up hard. That is zone slingshot works really good where you, you get outside of this edge. So the outer slingshot, you work outside of the edge here. And they get a yellow candle that forms to pull you in for the deep retracement. And then the zone break are these dots. This would be a zone break. So what happened afterwards was a zone break. So you can see that it never got to the outer edge, but then it, the zone break, a yellow bar will form. Now I want to give you a little heads up on doing this. And, and Thomas, our member in the room, picked this up. And I, I appreciate Thomas picking this up also. So I appreciate your feedback in the room, guys, that you give. Um, you notice my oscillator, we talked about this for months and months extensively, getting into a weak or strong market, using this oscillator with my zone break. <clears throat> so if we were breaking these dots, which is my zone break, the yellow bar will, bar will automatically form. But look at this oscillator. Notice how it got below a negative 100 and was pegged, flatlined right here, going into the zone break. I mean, that is weakness, major weakness. So that... I'll give an opportunity, 84 potential all the way down to 69. All right, over 13 point trade. It just came off of a it just came off of a 10 point potential failure trade, right into a zone break, a 13 point potential trade. But notice both of them had that oscillator confirmation. And this oscillator, we put this on your charts uh, yesterday because we'll make up the workspaces. Uh, Gerald plans on shipping this out to everybody. We talked yesterday, Monday. I'm getting the PDF finished by Sunday, so we're planning on shipping this out Monday or Tuesday. Is that correct, Gerald? Are we all still on the same timeline? We're planning on shipping this out Monday or Tuesday to you guys um, uh, to get this out to you if everything goes as planned. And then um, I'm going to work on the PDF and, and put all these settings in so you have a reference. But uh, the bottom line is, is that <clears throat> use this oscillator for confirmation. So this failure setup. It went up, crashed below negative 100, arrow formed, 
your speakers went off right there for that short 10 point potential um, this is where the strategy broke the strategy broke here but look at the oscillator the oscillator was weak it was already below negative 100 um, you see this little it broke down retraced a little bit and then flatlined again typically what will happen if you break down you come up and you flatline for a couple bars that market is in a trend you see it came down here retraced but never flatlined then the market retraced so that's not trending came up retraced didn't flatline not retraced but this came up flatlined into the zone break give us a nice little thing and then uh, uh, Sal, Aaron, good job. And Derek, again, you guys picked up this one in the afternoon. You guys were uh, on this one, so good job. On the zone break, they were talking about this one also, uh, the break out there at 12.49. Look at the oscillator. My oscillator got above positive 100. It broke out, retraced, flatlined for a couple bars, and then it shot straight up. That's called a zone breakout because it's above my dots. In the afternoon, we get the power hour trade. The, uh, you guys were all over this in the room chatting this one up. Where we, where we got the power hour trade into the close. There it is. There's your power hour trade. I just went over. But take a look at it again. What happened? Is in a stronger market. You got above positive 100. It comes up. Look at the retracement. Makes like a little cup and handle formation there. Little cup and handle. And then it starts flatlining for a couple bars, and then it starts trending. So it was already into a stronger market. It was already into a stronger market before it broke out on this zone break, and that's what I like. Yeah, you can overlay anything over the top of the chart you want. Uh, Terrence asked if you can overlay uh, profile charts. You can overlay anything you want on charts. You can. Uh, this, I, you, you don't need to because it's right beside the chart, but you can do that. So these will turn yellow, like I said. Um, if it's an outer zone, the outer zone will look like this. It will turn yellow. So if it gets to the outer zone, gets it back inside the outer zone, it will turn yellow also. So And it will give you an audible alert on your speakers. So you have three setups that's going to give you an audible alert. The outer zone, which we'll look for this morning, the zone break, and then the failure trade right here that, that went off yesterday. Um, so it was a nice trading day yesterday. We got the failure for over 10 points potential, zone break over 13 points of potential. This zone break potential was what? 88 and three quarters. The high was 01, 12 point potential in the S&P. And then we got the zone break potential into the power hour close, 5,100 up to 14, 14 S&P point potential there. So just a beautiful day trading the S&P yesterday. But all was confirmed with the oscillator below. All right. So that's how you can use power hour. Now, what are we going to look for this morning? So we know so knowing our setups, here's what we're going to look for. We'll get a yellow bar that forms if we break out of our zone break here. Our candle. Or we'll get a yellow candle. If we get below, I mean uh, if we break our zone break down here also. I'm sorry, right there below our zone break so we're going to look to buy this retracement and if it gets below it closes back inside the candle will turn yellow if it breaks out of the zone it will turn yellow there for a breakout trade okay now how we're going to set up the room to make it easy for you guys we're going to set it up like this just to make sure we're on the same page we're going to set it up so you can look at it per market we're going to make market profile a little bit bigger because profile is very, very effective. Profile comes with the, with the upgrade. So we know profile right now, the breakdown in an imbalance market is 94 and a quarter. That will put us below here if we do have a breakdown today below 92 and a half. If it does not close back inside for an outer zone retracement, we may have a zone breakdown forming. So we'll, these are outer edge levels, but we're going we're, we're gonna to make the workspace like this for you. So then, like yesterday's trades, it's going to be right in front of you. You're going to see it, all the trades right in front of you on per market. So then if you want to set up, it's so cheap out there to buy monitors now. You can buy a $150, $200 monitor, take a USB uh, cord, plug it into your computer, and have several monitors. So if you're going to trade different markets, 
I would I would educate traders to put market profile beside this one main chart that you trade off of and you're good to go what I will do in the PDF if you're a strategy trader like I love 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 the 1212 on the outer edge trade um, it's one of my most effective Rico charts on an outer edge trade on the S&P so I will show you how to set that up on the strategies also if you want to use just the indicator I'll sh uh, that is preset already with instructions on the PDF and Gerald's going to set it up but this is how we're going to roll with the room we're going to roll with the S&P and the S&P here to the right and S&P market profile here to the left if you want to set up several different uh, monitors to watch different uh, markets you can set up the Nasdaq to both the crude oil to both gold to both all you got to do is change uh, change both charts uh, too because these are already the same change the charts to whatever you want to do Russell 2000 or what have you okay the third so that's the package we're having come out to you uh, um, if everything goes well when I talked to Gerald we did the workspaces yesterday we should have if everything goes well Monday or Tuesday of next week it should be in your hands so secondly the third thing what we're going to do next is separately is our zone our zone breakout I mean our scalper now our scalper is where it looks for uh, trade setups when the market goes consolidates breaks out consolidates breaks out or more mo momentum trader so this is this is going to come on our, our with a separate a separate file and a separate PDF so what this tries to do is it scouts what it does it looks for consolidation breakout so you'll look for consolidations or have its own PDF this is yesterday's trades had a nice day trading yesterday on the Nasdaq futures so it will consolidate breakout consolidate breakout trades had a real nice uh, day yesterday picking up these breakout trades but this this works on all markets also um, but this is called the scalper uh, this is where the market's trying to um, you're looking for 8 to 12 ticks on a push on your initial push and then you can try to let the runner run um, but that is a separate file with a separate PDF so what you're gonna get is you're gonna get this like right now if you're trading the S&P we know what we're looking for to trade now we're looking to trade three setups we're looking to trade this breakout we're looking to trade this outer zone retracement when these yellow candles form and we're looking to trade the failure trade right just like yesterday yesterday here they fired up live there's the breakout there's the zone breakout fired live there's the zone breakout fired live and there's a failure trade that fired live after I talked about it I mean as we was talking about before this even happened all right so that's how our workspace is going to be set up what I want to do is I want to focus this trading room on the S&P to make market profile big with all these three setups firing off you traders that have their that lease the program you can set up and cookie cut this on any markets that you want to trade we're going to focus on the S&P in the room I think if we spread ourselves out too too thick on these three setups and we start looking at all these different markets at the same time it causes new traders to become confused and if you can't make make ticks off the S&P you probably can't make ticks on any other market because the S&P is the most highest volume traded instrument out there in uh, uh, in the futures market so there's a lot of volume that comes in uh, the scalper also um, now the scalper I like the Nasdaq the best uh, but it works on I, I had it running on the Dow yesterday I had it so the markets on the scalper I like the best I have it running right now I like the Dow I like the Russell 2000 I like the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq futures on the scalper I think you guys will really enjoy the scalper software also as far as these three setups go uh, we are leaving the workspace like this so right when Gerald ships this out we're going down to the S&P uh, it's going to look just like this in the room we're going to have the S&P here looking for the zone breakout there's your retracement and then um, there's your market profile to the right we're going to make it a little bigger and then um, we're going to have the the failure trade fire here also when you want to cookie cut it and trade different instruments because you can trade as many instruments as you guys desire on your own computers uh, just change the uh, if you put it on different uh, if you guys have three four different monitors or what have you or you can put on the same monitor you can put these all on the same monitor if you want 
uh, we're going to save these workspaces for you. Okay, that's what we did yesterday. 